How to plan a photo of the total lunar eclipse happening on May 16th. Hello, photo builder Rafael the Bar here. Great news, in a few days, on Sunday, May 16th, there will be a total lunar eclipse. It's a stunning phenomenon, so jot down the date because you can miss it. The Earth will move between the Sun and the Moon, covering the Sun's rays and casting its strong shadow, the Umbra, on the Moon. As the eclipse advances, you'll see the moon disappear more and more under the Earth's shadow, until it almost disappears. Then the umbra, the strongest shadow of the Earth, will cover completely the moon. It's when the moon gets this special red color, red hue. This red moon is also known as the blood moon. Well, long story short, if you wish to photograph this natural phenomenon, the first thing you need to figure out is where on Earth the total lunar eclipse is visible. Ok, let's start planning the eclipse. Go to Photo Builds, tap on Planner, and now tap on the Map Settings button, the button you see here next to the plus button on the map, and under Map Layers, tap on Eclipse to access the total, the lunar and solar eclipses calendar. And here just tap on the eclipse on May 16th, 2022 to switch it on and go back to the map. Now notice that the, the date has been set in time bar uh, to uh, May 16th, 2022, the date of the eclipse. Now zoom out to see all the eclipse info on the map, cool, and also swipe the panel to the left until you get to the second eclipse panel, this one, here's where we'll find the times of all the important phases of the eclipse. And of course, these times are for the red pin position. On the map you see the parts of the world where the eclipse is not visible, for example here in Russia, in Asia, uh, Australia, and where the eclipse is visible at moonset, in these locations not all the faces of the eclipse are visible, but the moon is going to be pretty low in the sky, this is in Europe and Africa and Middle East, where all the faces of the eclipse are visible, here in the part of the eastern side of uh, USA, Canada and uh, Central America, South America, and also where the eclipse is visible at moonrise. Again, in these locations here, in Canada and the west side or central side, west side of USA, not all the faces of the eclipse will be visible, but yeah, once again, from these spots, you'll be able to photograph the eclipse when it's low in the sky, which is awesome if you want to align the eclipse with an interesting subject. Well, not that you know where on earth the eclipse is visible, let's see for a given location all the faces of the eclipse that can be photographed there and the time each phase of the eclipse occurs. Let's do it. Let's imagine that you live in San Francisco and you wish to photograph the total lunar eclipse. To place the red pin in San Francisco, tap on the load button here, tap type San Francisco. And here we are, if I tap on the result, the red pin will, will be placed in San Francisco. Nice. Now on the top panel you have all the faces of the eclipse that will be visible in San Francisco, including the times. And as you see on the top panel in San Francisco it's not uh, possible to photograph all the faces of the eclipse because we are in the moonrise, vis uh, eclipse visible at moonrise. And as you know, seven faces occur during the total lunar eclipse. When the penumbral eclipse begins, this is when the moon enters the penumbral shadow of the Earth, the weakest shadow, the eclipse is almost not perceptible to the naked eye. When the partial eclipse begins, is when the moon enters the umbra, the strongest shadow of the Earth. The eclipse is more and more perceptible. When the total lunar eclipse begins, is when the umbra, the Earth's strongest shadow, covers completely the moon is when the moon gets its characteristic red hood. When the eclipse is greatest, is the central moment of the total lunar eclipse. And then we have when the total eclipse ends, the, when the partial phase of the eclipse ends, and when the penumbral eclipse ends. Going back to our plan here in San Francisco, we see that the first phase of the eclipse we can see is the total lunar eclipse, which begins at uh, 8.30 pm. The eclipse is maximum at 9 12 p.m. The total lunar eclipse ends at 9.54 p.m. 
The partial lunar eclipse ends at 10.56 p.m. and the eclipse ends, the phenomenal eclipse phase ends at 11.51 p.m. here in San Francisco. On the top panel, if you do a long press, you tap and hold on the time of the phase you want, the time will be set to the uh, time bar. You can also swipe the time bar to see how the eclipse evolves at all time. Well, to sum up, the top panel gives us the times each phase of the, curve of the eclipse occur, and on the map we see the direction where the moon is at all time. Direction that is shown by this thin blue line you see here on the map. This way you know where the moon is at all time during the eclipse. So, with all this information, I think it's time for us to plan our total lunar eclipse shot. If you want to photograph all the faces of the eclipse with no foreground, choose an open space, that a, an spa a place where nothing can block the view of the eclipse. For example, you can go someplace here. Just make sure that nothing blocks the view of the moon during the eclipse. Then on top panel, do a long press on the face of the eclipse you wish to photograph and the time will be set in the time bar. So you know on the map by this thin blue line you see on the map where that face of the eclipse occurs. So you know everything in the time and the direction the eclipse will occur. And of course, when you run the red pin position, tap on the AR button and you'll be able to visualize the position of the moon on the reality so you also know how high the moon will be in the sky. Here you have the horizon and here you have the position of the moon. I love the AR views, you know that. If you are in a location where you can photograph the eclipse when it's low in the sky, remember that this occurs in the locations stated as eclipse at moonrise and eclipse at moonset, between these colorful curves you see on the map, it's always a good idea to plan a photo where the eclipse can be aligned with an interesting subject. Like for example, a photo like this, a photo that Antoni Claire took uh, during a partial lunar eclipse in Menorca. I'm not going to show you how to plan this kind of shots now, because I have a video here that explains exactly all the steps you need to follow to plan these cool moon alignments. So go and watch it. Another option when photographing the eclipse is to use two cameras. One camera with a telephoto lens to photograph all the faces of the eclipse and another camera with a wide-angle lens to photograph the landscape. For example, if you go to the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge, I know there is a nice beach here, Kirby Bridge, here you'll be able to photograph the faces of the eclipse along with the Golden Gate Bridge, which might be a great, great shot. And at the end you can composite, create a composite of the image, taking the faces of the clips shot with the telephone lens and take the shot uh, taken by the wide angle, with the wide angle lens as the base photo. To get a similar photo that Jose Antonio Arbaz took in one of the most powerful total lunar eclipses I ever seen in the past. The effect is pretty cool, don't you think? Uh, he even got featured by NASA. When it comes to planning and photographing the total lunar eclipse, the possibilities are endless. And by the way, this video is about planning the lunar eclipse. If you wish to learn how to photograph the coming total lunar eclipse, I invite you to download our super detailed lunar eclipse photography guide. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download it. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.